Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is a random love reading. We're in the kitchen and I just felt like it. Random love reading. Okay, this is for you. If you're drawn, there'll be a message for you. There will be an extended reading to this one where we look at the other side of the equation, how they feel about you. We do some channeling, we get messy, all of that good stuff. So, the, ooh, <laughs> the link for that will be in the description box underneath the video. Oh my God. Okay, we've already got some spiritual big jobs, people. We've got some, ooh, major arcana. We've got some shenanigans. We've got some heat. It is so hot at the moment. Oh, wow. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we've got the Hierophant. This is an issue about commitment. The C word, commitment, okay. When you mix the Hierophant in a love reading, it has to do with what's conventional, what's understood. Um, it can be kind of marriage, moving in, commitment, that sort of thing. It's a very diverse world. There are lots of different forms of commitment and what you see to be the next stage in a relationship, but it definitely means getting to a solid stage of some kind of relationship model, okay? There's some, there's a lot here that links your situation, your love situation in the present to what is going on or has gone on in the past. The first card to jump out is the judgment card. When we get the judgment card, there's normally three figures on the card. And this is past, present and future. Now judgment has a lot to do with having another go at something. It can be, and it is for a few of you, um, the ex coming back card or the person the person who kind of drifted off in the past, drifting back, there's a kind of drifty quality to this. It feels like you are getting another do-over about something. Maybe you don't even want that, you know? You might even not want to hear from this person or you might not want the memory of something to still be important to you, but it seems like it is, okay? Um, Memory and timelines and relationships can be messy, can't they? Very rarely do they stick as we think they should to a kind of a timeline where you think to yourself, well, that was this and this was that and that's the past and that is done. Sometimes it bleeds across all the timelines. And what I'm getting for you, if this is resonating with you, is that there is a messy and I'm getting an image of like when you have a, a clear glass and you have a paintbrush that's loaded with paint and you, maybe watercolor paint or ink and you kind of just put that into the water and all of these fronds and swirls of color come out and it feels like that that's what this situation feels like it feels fluid it feels colourful and it feels unfinished and it feels messy, okay? Not in a really negative way. It's messy and it's a bit complicated. Okay. I've got the Two of Cups here. Lovely card, gorgeous card, obviously in a love reading what everybody wants to see and it is. Here is the angel blessing this union. There are two people exchanging cups. It's like an equal exchange of cups. You know, there's interest on both sides. We exchange the cups. Uh, we love each other, that kind of connection. And I get that. And it's Venus in Cancer, which is a beautiful aspect of planet of love meets the sign that loves to love, you know? What's, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this picture, okay? This is how it kind of could be, this is how it should be, or this is how it was. That's what I'm getting with that judgment card. Okay. 
Next to the judgment card, we've got the world. With the world card, there is a sense of, and if I'm, yeah, my numbers are terrible with tarot, but it's true, they're consecutive. Judgment is the second to last card of the major arcana. The world is the last card. The fool being the first, we're on a new journey, it's a new beginning. And the world is like, this is how it went. This is how it closes down. This is how it, kind of this is how it ends, but at the same time, this is how it begins. The end is the beginning. You've got a sense here of somebody's presence. Personally, I think possibly a message or a communication from a person that brings them back into your present mind. It brings them back into your present thoughts, consciousness, awareness, and experience. So um, for some of you, this is actually this person showing up somehow. This could be, we've got the Eight of Wands at the bottom. The Eight of Wands is a big communication card. Uh, as ha has been the case for the last few random love readings I've done, I'm getting strong um, fire connection, as in you could be dealing with a fire sign, and I'm also getting air, so you could be dealing with an air sign. When you get the Eight of Wands, something which may have been, and I'm getting the Four of Cups in the middle, may have been stagnant or... Kind of, I'm getting a hanged man energy, but the hanged man isn't here. Something that's not been moving in that hierophanty direction is set to change. There's set to be a piece of communication, there's set to be a message, there's set to be a conversation. And that in itself, sorry, my chair's really uncomfortable. That in itself, triggers a different cycle of events. And I would go so far as to say it triggers a more favorable cycle of events than what you've been experiencing. Seven of Swords, never to be ignored in a tarot reading. Hello, Seven of Swords, okay. Now with the Seven of Swords, and I want to take a clarifier, here we go. Not one of those, one of these. With the Seven of Swords, yes, it's the Thief card. Yes, it's a slight warning card and a card that should always tell us to be on our guard. You know, be on your guard. Someone knows where the stash is and, and they're off to take it. But also with the Seven of Swords, you can get a message here of how you should behave. And sometimes it's quite a kind of incisive and harsh tarot message which says cover your tracks not go off and steal a load of swords but cover your tracks keep your powder dry cool your jets and keep yourself under the radar in other words let's say you've been heartbroken about somebody and you've been dying to hear from them and you haven't heard from them for ages and then you hear from them Seven of Swords would say to you, don't just jump on that. Don't jump on that. You know, don't show, don't put your heart on your sleeve here. You don't have to show your abject enthusiasm. Keep it under the radar. Keep it suppressed. It's, it's a card that I think is telling you to have an eye on your timing and just to have your ears up, you know, so that you're not too taken aback, and so that you don't show every feeling that you have. And that's not to say you lie or you're sneaky or any of that, but just that you don't immediately react. That's what I would say, don't immediately react. Let's have a Brian and Wendy Freud card for the Seven of Swords. And we get three. This is all right, this is good. Okay. We get the Queen of Passage. The universe is trying to move you onto a different stage. And it's just asking you to be aware. 
we've got the kestrel and we've got the raven and we've got the pomegranate in this card. The pomegranate says this kind of secret, the secrets, there's things hidden, there are things that are not quite known. And that eight of wands is definitely like the gateway to a conversation that you need to have but you don't know them enough to be able to react one way or the other until you've kind of learned a bit, watched a bit, observed a bit, thought a bit, reflected. You know, it's that kind of thing. With the Kestrel and the Raven, there is again a sense of a message coming. There's a sense of somebody wanting to talk, and for some of you, it's somebody who hasn't talked for a while, definitely. It has that feel about, um, can we talk? That whole, can we talk message where you're like, oh, can we? Can we? I don't know. Just with that seven of swords, cool your jets and don't react too quickly. Next to the queen of passage, I get the hero. This is about you being the hero of your own life. This is really important. You may have fought very hard to get to where you are. And I know that very often, like on YouTube, we see videos about people, and you know, there's nothing wrong with these videos, they're quite inspiring, who will say to you, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, or I did this lifestyle, or whatever it is, and I started from nothing, and here's how I scratched my way to it. You know, sometimes the unsung heroes are the people who found it really hard to get out of bed in the morning some days, and now they do get out of bed in the morning. And that doesn't make for such a good video, you know? Some days I could not find the energy to brush my hair. I did not hardly know my own name or couldn't put my own pants on. And now I do, you know? It doesn't, um, like when you go through a breakup, it doesn't really, I suppose, merit a hero story to say I was there. I hadn't showered for four days, I'd eaten four tubs of Ben and Jerry's and I'd not answered the door and my hair looked like a scarecrow. And now I can brush my hair and I've eaten some salad, you know? But what I'm trying to say here in a very long-winded way is you've come a long way, even if it doesn't seem like it on the human kind of external scale of things, you have. It took a lot, I think, to get you to where you are now. And that's why, and we've got an owl here of wisdom, okay? And that's why you need to be very careful about what you do with the goods from here, you know? Because what you really need to know and what your dialogue with this person could unfold to be, if that's even a good sentence, is where they're coming from and where they've been because for some of you, you have not seen this person for a while with this seven of swords and this eight of wands and it feels like very often we can be very tempted to in a situation where we wanted to hear from someone to gloss over the kind of ugly questions like, why didn't you pick up the phone? Or why did you disappear? Or where have you been? Or is there someone else? That, that kind of thing. You're at a kind of a stage with this situation, or you will be at a stage with this situation where there is this communication. It does break a deadlock. Over here, I've got this two of swords. If I can pick it up. Now twos are still decision-making cards and you've got these two together. Very different looking cards. This is a sort of a stalemate and this is an exchange of cups. You don't have the page of cups, the knight of cups, the kind of romantic, you know, um, and it's not always a good thing, this serenade, you know, I'm going to stand under your bedroom, play the guitar and persuade you to come out. It's not like that. Someone's decided to get in touch. They've thought about it. They have reflected. It's not a hot headed, passionate, oh, I have to see you. It's not that kind of energy. It's more, I've had some time and there does seem to have been some time here. 
I've had some time to reflect and to think and I want to talk to you about this. It feels like that and you may have no idea that this is coming or you may have some idea but you certainly aren't particularly expecting it I don't think from this person. Underneath the Seven of Swords we've got the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is a fantasy future card. This is a warning, I think. Again, together with the Seven of Swords, which is telling you to keep your powder dry and essentially to be quite self-focused about the whole situation. Not to be taken in by anything glamorous, by any promises, by um, smoke screens, gaslighting, false jewellery, you know, it's that whole, there is here, there's some costume jewellery. I never know what this weird phantom shuttlecock thing is, I suppose it's a ghost. Ghosting, snakes, castles in the sand, you know, there's this whole, and even here where you get this victory, you've got a skull on the cup, you know, it's false promises. Don't be taken in by any kind of false promises and sometimes it's very hard. I mean, we've all been in a really weird situation for the last kind of 18 months as it is. Things are a bit distorted. Our communication skills are a bit rusty, some of us, for a start. And for some of you, this is a situation where there was wounding, you know, there was emotional kind of difficulty. And it did take you a lot to get back up the summit and crawl back up the hill or crawl out of bed or whatever it was. Over here I've got the strength card and yet again I get Leo energy, Cancer Leo cusp energy, um, fire sign energy. But also this card reminds you that this woman has the kind of will of the lion. She, it's about knowing yourself. Finding out how, you found, you found out how strong you are already. And you may not want to give that up. And you don't have to, is what I'm saying in this. In the extended reading, I'm going to use uh, the Lightseers deck. And I'm going to pull a totally different deck, of, um, different spread of how they feel about you. But also, again, I'm going to look at it totally from the other side as if it's through their eyes looking in, because they do not appear in this reading. They don't show up as a particular character. I don't get a completely strong flavour of the person. I do strongly feel this is someone where there's been distance, where there's been difficulty, where there's been either a lack of communication or a difficulty in communication. And there is very much a need at the top of the reading here with the Queen of Swords, a very much a need for you to be very, very true to yourself in the whole situation. Very true to yourself, as much as you can be. And it isn't easy. So in the extended, I'm going to look, I'm going to look at the other side of it. I'm also going to look, yes, I'm also going to look at if there's anything behind the scenes with the Seven of Swords as well. If there's any kind of warning there that we need to know about, we'll have a little dig on that. We'll do some channeling. It'll probably get messy. I'll probably need a lie down, okay? For your Oracle card, you get Y. Y is about curiosity. When I say about this Seven of Swords, about not reacting, it's a curiosity rather than a need to know. I'm curious. It's been a while since I heard from you. That's it. You could say something like that. Because what you really want to say to someone if there's been like a gap is, where have you been? That always closes a situation down. 
This is about curiosity about why you are here, why this person in particular, why did it go down like it did? What was your, well, what was your part? How are you accountable? That's always the most interesting question in any relationship and the most difficult question. Um, how am I accountable for this? You know, where am I coming from with this? It's often very, especially if there's been somebody not communicating with you, it can be very tempting to sort of always be looking over their side of the fence, thinking, what are they thinking? What are they doing? What do they mean by that? When sometimes you should be thinking, what am I doing? What did I mean by that? Why am I doing this? What brought me to this point? What is it I really, really, really want? What does my heart desire? What do I need? What do I deserve? What would make me truly happy? Nine of Cups. That is what this card is, Mars and Pisces. Asking you, what would make you happy? What makes you tick? Does this person actually make you tick? You know, that kind of a question. Let's have an angel oracle card for you. Yes! <laughs> yes! I like it. Doing a little dance. New beginnings. Very much feel this, especially when we got um, the world card with the judgment card at the top. When you get that world card, it is really important. It's a big thing. New beginnings, big energies, starting again, but also finishing off a particular cycle of energy. You do have this lovely Two of Cups in here. It's a very promising card. It's a very beautiful card. The energy of it is a very high quality of connection, but at the same time, you remain the Queen of Swords, not completely dazzled by any kind of all that glitters isn't gold and also using your sword to kind of cut through all of this cosmic cloud and bewitchment and and also your own human ability to be able to have rose-colored glasses and to smooth over things that maybe should be inspected you know we all do that call it curiosity be very curious. None of this may have happened. For some of you, this hasn't happened at all yet. Be very curious when that message comes in because that's gonna take you somewhere far more healthy than any investigative need to know would do, okay? I'm gonna go and do the extended now and do a completely different deck of cards and I can't wait for that. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the like button and I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.